Welcome to MMA Fancast. My name's Luke Payson. As always, welcome back to all those who have subscribed. And if you haven't yet, please subscribe to the channel so you can see more awesome interviews with my upcoming guest, Timbo Slice. Timbo, welcome back to the show. Thank you very much. Happy to be here. Always great having you on the show. I've gotten to see you really have your entire MMA career inside the 247 cage, which is pretty impressive considering you live in Michigan. And uh, you and some of your teammates have made the trip many times. And now you're kind of at a, at a great point. Just a few weeks away, December 16th, Braun the Berg uh, for 247 Fighting Championship is having you and Hootley square off for a title eliminator. Let's jump into it. What does that mean? What have they told you uh, that this fight is really about? You're two and one. Hootley is 3-0, and and all of your fights have been, both combined, have been within the 247 cage. So how did this come together? What have they told you about it being a title eliminator? Well, it all came together. Um, honestly, I don't know how they came to the decision, but I do remember way back when uh, I watched Ethan Goss versus Calvin Harbaugh. I was like, man, title fight. That sounds awesome. Um, do you guys have an amateur lightweight uh champion at the moment and they were like oh no we don't and I was like well <laughs> if I can get some wins together I would love to fight for a title for you guys you know they've been real supportive they've let me fight for them on any card that they can get me on and uh yeah they've been great people so to be able to fight for one of their belts it'd be like dream come true yeah that's great it also shows you know I've gotten to, to know you over the, the your time it's great to have good communication, you know, between fighters, uh, the legendary matchmaker, Jim Mooney, Hunter Homestack, Ryan Middleton. Uh, it doesn't really help any fighter or coaches to have some type of beef with promoters. And obviously, 247 is just great at really trying to make things work. It doesn't always work out. Sometimes fighters miss weight or get sick or get injured or things happen. But overall, it's great to have a good, good relationship with 247. As far, I mean, you mentioned watching the 145 pound pro champ who's now also the 155 pound pro champ the first ever champ champ couldn't happen to a better more incredible guy um in in Ethan the Wolverine Goss have you gone back and either remembered watching Hootley fight in person or have watched him on 247 live the app or have, how much of his three fights have you watched and without giving your plans away what do you like about this matchup? Uh, you guys are both at the at the top of the uh, amateur lightweight ranks. That's why I think it makes perfect sense for this to be a title eliminator. And then I can only imagine, no matter who wins, what type of stud they're going to have to bring in as the challenger at that point. But go ahead and give me your thoughts on Hootley. Oh, man, he's a real tough op opponent. Um, I like it. I like the matchup. He's got a lot of great skills uh, on the feet and on the ground. I remember back in April, I believe it was, I was right there in the crowd because I had fought on that same exact card um, at the Hollywood Casino at the Meadows, and he fought Hunter Niswinder. And I remember that one pretty well because um, I've gotten to know Hunter as well. And uh, he's more of a striker, and he said, he was like, man, if I had known he was such a good wrestler, I wouldn't have, you know. <laughs> No diss to Hunter. Hunter's a great fighter. Hey, so, matchups make a difference. Absolutely. Yep. He definitely uh, He definitely said, though, he's got some good skills. And then watching his most recent fight, I can see he's got some great skills on the feet, too. So it just gets me really excited. It gets me motivated to get in the gym, work extra hard on everything, whether it be my grappling, my stand-up, get my cardio right so I can just keep going all three rounds with him. And I know it's going to be a great fight because – as tough as he is, I know I'm just as tough. I know I know with the skills that I've acquired, the work that I've put in, I've got a lot of things that I could possibly bring to the table that he's not ready for. We saw that in your last MMA fight out there in Cincinnati where it was a Marine vet versus Marine vet. A lot of respect and love between you two guys. Ooh, obviously. Right. It, was, it was fantastic. But you ended up pulling out not only – like a perfectly timed submission given the situation in the fight in the last couple minutes of the third round, but also a very unique submission, uh, which is important, particularly he was a wrestler background. 
obviously Hootley's wrestling uh, is probably at a slightly uh, more profound level, although Cliff had great wrestling as well. They're both they're both very high level wrestlers, but it seems like jujitsu has always kind of been designed to you know to be creative and to catch people and things they don't uh, understand. Now, straight up, and I think you know this, Hoot Lee wrestling background, good hands. We've seen that in his last fight. Kind of the whole one one fifty five package, just like you are. Also trains. At a jiu-jitsu gym. He doesn't train at a wrestling gym. He trains at a jiu-jitsu gym with a legendary Brazilian uh, jiu-jitsu black belt in um, Belfort and is kind of developing his own jiu-jitsu. So how do you see that matchup, the the, the striking, the grappling, but what do you think jiu-jitsu versus jiu-jitsu? Because I know you're a jiu-jitsu guy and you really liked the ending to, to, to Cliff. Is this also your first three, three-minute round? I believe it would be. Because this should be at advanced amateur, would be my guess. You're two and one, he's three and oh. Are you aware that this is a three, three minute round fight with the advanced amateur rules? Yes, sir. It's it's um in Ohio, it was like that. Oh, that's so, right. Yeah. Because the yeah. rule set was a little bit more of what we consider advanced amateur, even though it was in Ohio, right? Okay, yeah. and, and so how much does that how much does that play into it? The, the little bit more of an open rule set, a little bit more. Well, in in my gym, since it's dominant in jiu-jitsu, um, yeah. we do longer rounds, and you know the main portion of my cardio comes from my training. It comes from my grappling. It comes from that. You know, I work my conditioning. I don't just go run. I also run. I don't just grapple. Like I train with dudes that are bigger than me. I'm one of the smallest dudes in my gym. And so whenever I get matched up with people my size, it's, it's, wow, it's awesome. I love it because I can actually work positions. I can actually throw them around. I can actually get my own takedowns. I can get my own back takes. Um, my offense comes out a whole lot more once I'm matched up with somebody my size. And like I said, I've got some skills, some different things that I've been working on that uh, I feel are going to play really well with my style. And that comes mixing up with the stand-up and with the grappling, I feel like, you know, with his wrestling background, it's going to make a lot of these things open up that, you know, maybe just training jujitsu or just training wrestling, like you wouldn't see. Yeah, I completely agree. I think that's where the mixed martial arts part of mixed martial arts is so wonderful, whether it's somebody, no matter what background they have, the mixed martial arts part makes them uh, have more weapons because like you said, opportunities open up people from different backgrounds might not see certain things, but it also opens up opportunities for the opponent. It's a great back and forth. Um, I'm, I'm scheduled to have your soon to be opponent Hootley on the show tomorrow. And uh, I say that to say, I think that's, what's cool, right? He's going to have a lot of, of things that make him see that this fight is going to go his way. You've got a lot of skills. And that's really what happens. Once you get through your first couple amateur fights, like you and he both have, and you're at the advanced amateur level, it's really about leveling up. It's really about getting after guys that have skills because it doesn't help you to beat people who have no kind of real, you know, re they're not at that level. So I think it's going to be very exciting. And I'm going to mention on the show with him that I've interviewed you to get people to be able to look at both uh, at both sides. You guys both are crowd favorites. He's known to have a deafening crowd. Uh, you, you're yeah. Yeah. You're, you're definitely very entertaining. I think you've picked up uh, some fans being on the same shows over and over again, but what do you think you've heard it? You've seen it. The, the Hoot Lee experience. Uh, how do you think that's going to play with you when you're in there and everyone's going, you know, the, the, a hoot call coming in when you guys are fighting in Monroeville Convention Center, which is a really big place and it's going to be packed. Oh, I love it. See, I've I've always been one to um to kind of thrive off that adversity, to thrive off of the the challenge of overcoming that kind of stuff. Like when somebody gets overly hype on themselves, like I love the feeling of like I love it. And that's not saying any disrespect, of course, because like I said, he's a tough opponent. This could be a three round war. This could end in the first round. But the feeling of knowing that everybody's looking at you, regardless of if they're there for you or against you, like, oh, 
Yes, scream, scream his name louder. Because as long as the crowd is loud, my energy is going to be going through the roof too. And I'm going to be smiling the whole time, getting hit, hitting them back, grappling all of it. It's just going to make me feel better. And like I said, the louder the, his crowd is, the more of it's more it's going to motivate me to just do something. That makes off. perfect. That makes perfect sense. And even though you know they'll be very loud for him, it means that all the attention will be on your fight. And I think there are times, uh, particularly you know may, maybe as people are working their way up the ranks, where I've been to live MMA fights where you can kind of tell the crowd's not really enthusiastic and that's a shame because every fighter that gets in there whether the record's o and o or whatever it happens to be has done work to be there but sometimes it takes time for the crowd to warm up to know who they're rooting for for or against or whatever it is they're not going to be a problem with that your your fight has implications it's a title fight eliminator plus there's a lot in the crowd that are going to recognize you and know you because you put on some great shows within 247 and of course a lot of the crowd's going to be uh rooting for him. But regardless, all eyes are going to be on YouTube. And I think that does raise the excitement level, just like when Ethan the Wolverine Goss was going for his second belt, that that had some energy, that had some excitement. We've got a local fighter on that card, Brittany Bickert, who's been looking to make her debut at pro level for, I think, over a year, maybe a year and a half. It's very tough to match at the female pro level. Um, and, and then there's, uh, so there's just so much going on in that card. I think it's just going to build and build and build. I have no idea what order it'll be other than the the, the pro main event being Justin the Patton. Uh, General Hobie, the main event would be my understanding. But there's going to be a lot of layers to this Brawl in the Berg 19. Um, so always great having you on the show. Can't wait to kind of see how this all plays out. The Monroeville Convention Center, Brawl in the Berg 19 is going to be absolutely incredible. That is the... 247 Fighting Championship end of the year show. And as we talked about last year, they do now, it'll be the second annual 247 award show based on fights that happened in 2023. You had an incredibly unique, very impressive, possible fight of the year submission, I would say. It's definitely up there as a possibility. Do you think there's a chance on December 19th that you could uh, do something that potentially puts you in the running for fight of the fight of the year or submission or, you know, one of those, one of those categories. Ah, uh, I mean, I think the only way I could top an inverted triangle would probably be to start flying. That'd be kind of cool. I'm no DJ, but you know, I like those little slick, uh, secret in your bag submissions. So we'll see what I got. We'll the see what comes out of it. The inverted was very, very unique. It was great to see. And that's the thing, like you mentioned, jujitsu is all about finding the openings and finding the timing uh, and then being able to being able to lock it down. You mentioned uh, DJ. I, I don't think, you know, uh, Mighty Mouse uh, DJ with the flying arm bar. That is, I think it's the latest submission ever in a five round, 24 minutes and like, I think 45 seconds. It was literally almost at the end for you. Have you ever tried that? And is it because as a jujitsu nerd, I'm sure you love that submission or is it a little too unsafe to practice on a sparring partner versus a live opponent? I'm just curious now that you brought DJ up. Yes. The flying arm bar, definitely a little bit. I don't, I don't personally like to hurt my partners, right. my training partners, my teammates. I, I honestly go very easy in training and you know it's helped me a lot building up the endurance to be able to break out of positions using skill instead of strength and um you know just trying to force things that you know shouldn't necessarily be there like a flying arm bar it probably shouldn't happen but it does because you know dj's a freaking he's the goat yeah but there's definitely some other submissions that you can get in midair that you don't necessarily have to hurt your partner to do and well, we'll, we'll see it. how that goes December 19th. As always, for your fans out there in Michigan, a great reminder for them to get pay-per-view through 247fighting.com. Give credit to you or have the 247 Live app downloaded and then order it that way. It's been absolutely incredible. Happy early Thanksgiving to you and Thank your you. family and your child and all of that because you've got so much going on in your life. Can't wait Thank to see you. what happens. Rolling the Berg, 19, December 
16th. That's fun to say back to back. <laughs> at Monroeville Conven- Convention Center. Thanks so much for coming on the show. You've been listening to Luke Basin with the one, the only, Timbo Size. Thanks so much, pal. Thank you so much, Luke. You have a good one. You too.